Hi there. I'm Kyle Burke with MuleSoft's Customer Success Team. And in this Friends with Max video series, I'm going to be talking to you about MuleSoft's Mule Migration Assistant, which is our tool to help kickstart and accelerate your Mule 3 to Mule 4 journey. In today's video, we're going to be taking a little bit deeper dive into the tool, where I'm going to take a Mule 3 application, walk you through its functionality, show you how to put that application into the Mule Migration Assistant, and get a Mule 4 application, show you the conversion report that's generated, and then finally, show you how to take that Mule 4 application that was generated and take it all the way to the point where you have a workable Mule 4 application. Without further ado, let's jump right in. First, let's review the Mule 3 application to be converted. In this Mule 3 application, an inbound HTTP connector listens for an HTTP GET request. The HTTP connector passes the value of last name as a query parameter as one of the message properties to the database connector. The database connector is configured to extract this value and use it in the SQL query listed below. As you can see, the mal expression in the SQL query references the value of the parameter passed to the HTTP connector. So, if the HTTP connector receives a request with a query parameter of last name equals Smith, the SQL query will select the first name from employees where the last name equals Smith. The database connector instructs the database server to run the SQL query, retrieves the result of the query, and passes it to the object to JSON message processor. This message processor converts the result to JSON. Since the HTTP connector is configured as a request response, the result is returned to the originating HTTP client. Next, let's review how to import this project into the MMA tool and convert it into a Mule 4 application. First, we need to ensure that the MMA tool that you downloaded is extracted. The extracted folder should contain a Mule Migration Assistant runner jar file. Note the location of this extracted jar file. In the command line, navigate to the location of the jar file and run the MMA tool with the following parameters. Firstly, the Mule version. This is the Mule 4 version that you wish to convert your application to. Secondly, the project base path. This is the location of the Mule 3 application you wish to convert. This is most likely the workspace used for Studio. Finally, the destination base path. This is the location where you would like to have the newly created Mule 4 project created. Be sure the last portion of the file path is the folder name where this new application will live. Note that this will create a new folder, so the folder should not already exist. Finally, execute the command. Here is what a successful run looks like. Now that we have migrated the applications, let's take a look at the conversion report generated by the MMA during this conversion. A migration report identifies items that remain to be completed in order to finish the Mule 4 migration. This report can be found at the destination project base path defined when you ran the command and will be located in the report folder. Here is what the report looks like for this conversion. As a reminder, items identified as errors are issues that require manual migration and were not converted by the tool. Luckily, in our case, there were no errors. Warnings are items that may require some manual intervention before deployment based on certain Mule 3 features that are not in Mule 4. In our case, there are five total warnings. The first warning is thrown because the Mule 3 application uses inbound properties and Mule 4 applications use attributes. Therefore, any use of inbound properties in migrated apps require you to replace references to inbound properties with the attributes object from the new Mule message. Next, the MMA tool recognized the potential for outbound properties within the flow, so it recommended possible remediations for this. Luckily, we don't use outbound properties in our application, so we will find that this can be ignored. Finally, in Mule 3, connectors and transports that send outbound data must explicitly specify outbound properties, such as outgoing status code responses 
or headers for an HTTP listener. Again, we do not utilize Mule 3, this Mule 3 feature in our application, so we can ignore the warning as well. Lastly, we come to the info level items. These are messages about Mule 3 features that were removed or changed to make use of Mule 4 improvements. You do not need to address these messages with any manual changes in your application. However, you can delete the message from the configuration XML for your application if you want to. Another point to mention about the report is that if you click on any of the messages within the report, it will reference you to online documentation for further reading of any of the particular errors. Now that we've seen how we can convert a Mule 3 application into a Mule 4 application, let's jump into Studio and understand what actually it takes to take the output of the MMA tool and convert it into a working Mule 4 application. In Studio 7, navigate to the File, Import, AnyPoint Studio, AnyPoint Studio Project from File System. In the project root field, navigate to the destination project base path that you indicated when you ran the project through the command line and click OK. Click Finish and allow the project to import into your AnyPoint Studio workspace. This may take a few minutes to complete. Once the project completes importing, you will notice that there are some unknown processors in the flow. Let's explore what these are. If you go into the configuration XML, you will see that there are attributes these are attributes from the compatibility module, which correlate to the warnings in the conversion report, and also contain links for further details of, on these warning messages. You will also notice that there are some comments within different processors that call your attention to things that need to be addressed within the flow. Let's start from the top down and address each one of these. Firstly, in the DB config, there is a note about the MySQL connection using the URL attribute. MMA has set the global connector configuration to the generic type to preserve the URL attribute used in the Mule 3 application. However, because the app uses a MySQL database, you can change the global configuration connection type in the settings to a MySQL connection. If we go back to the message flow and double click on the perform a query in MySQL processor, and then inspect the current configuration, you will see that the connection is set to generic connection. Let's go back to the processor and add a new configuration by clicking the green plus sign next to the connector configuration. Under the connection type, select MySQL connection. Next, select the recommended JDBC driver libraries, and also enter in the needed database connection details. Note that this demo assumes you have a configuration file with the needed credentials in it. If you go back to your XML, you can now delete the old generic configuration. Next, let's address the warnings about the use of outbound status code in the HTTP listener configuration. As we mentioned in the previous video, there are two warnings with regards to the outbound status code that do not apply to a project as you do not use the status code outbound property from the Mule 3 HTTP transports because no outbound property is set in the flow. For this reason, we can safely remove these configuration XML items. After this, we need to address the attributes to the inbound property component warning. This warning is here because any use of inbound property in the migrated app requires you to replace references to inbound properties with the attributes objects from the new mule message. Because we don't use inbound properties in this app, we can delete this compatibility module. The last warning to address is the warning about migrating outbound properties to variable components. As previously mentioned, we don't use outbound properties in the application, so we can remove this module. Next. Though no action is actually required, there is an item on the migration report that notes the difference in streaming strategies between Mule 3 and 4. If you go back to the message flow and open up the database select processor and go to the advanced tab, you will see that the repeatable file store iterable streaming strategy is selected by default. If you'd like to know more about the streaming strategies within Mule 4, you can find lots of information on our documentation site, docs.mulesoft.com. 
Next, we want to address the query using inbound properties to pull in the last name. Go to the general tab of the database select processor and go down to the SQL query text and replace the string to the right of the equal sign with colon last name. And then in the input parameters, reference the attributes.querypparams.lastnames like this. Last but not least, if you go back to the XML, you will see that there is one more warning about the use of outbound properties in the application. As previously mentioned, we do not use outbound properties in this application, so we can remove this XML component. And there you have it, a fully functioning Mule 4 application that the Mule Migration Assistant helped you to create. Thank you so much for your time today, where we took a look at a Mule 3 application converted it into a Mule 4 application, and then jumped right into Studio to see what exactly we needed to do to take it all the way to the end where we had a workable Mule 4 application. I hope this Friends with Max video series was informative for you, and I really hope you have the best of luck in your Mule 3 to Mule 4 journey. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.